my healer, you ready. My protector, you ready. My sustainer, you ready. Shukwaki, you ready. Jehovah, you ready. My sustainer, you ready. Team, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Good morning again, everyone. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. I will do a short continuation of that testimony, of the testimony of our, but I'm going to put it in terms of an exhortation. And yeah, I believe God's going to, I'm going to make it brief, but I believe God's going to bless your heart. So I'm calling this uh, hear no evil, see no evil. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. You know, I'm just going to speak from the heart, but I will have some scriptures, you know, to, uh, you know, just to, you know, to give to you to ponder on. You know, I want you to think about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. You know, the first thing is that, remember, this is, hear no evil, see no evil. So I'm going to talk about, you know, but the first thing I want to say is read you a couple of scriptures. You know, for instance, in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 30, it says that, you know, a good report. Amen? Is there anybody in the back to put up the scripture? A good report makes the bones what? Hello? A good report makes the bones to be fat. You know, also I want to read Proverbs 25 and verse 25. You know, and I'm bringing you good news today. Can you put Proverbs 25, 25 up please? Let's be quick. You know, as cold waters to a thirsty soul... So is good news, sir, from a far country. Hallelujah. Good news from a far country. So I'm bringing you good news all the way from Nigeria. Hallelujah. Well, that's where we went, in case uh, some of you don't know. You know, that's where we went and so forth. You know, and uh, one of the first things when I landed, I, we, we were there for three Sundays. And, uh, you know, we had, uh, during those few weeks we were there, we had opportunity to do four ministrations during those times. You know, um, my wife already told you about the ministration that we did uh, in the children's ministry. Ed Harrison. How many of you remember Ed, the young man that was with us some years ago? Ed? Hallelujah. Ed's a great young man, great man of vision. You know, he has a ministry in Nigeria doing a lot of good things. And we've always told him that, you know, next time we went, we will visit. It. So we visited there. So we had the ministration one Saturday with, the, with them there, 
And I had an opportunity also to, my wife did the administration of the children's ministry, and I just prayed for all the people there. Um, you know, but I also had an opportunity to, you know, minister to, I uh, attended, we attended service, three services while we were there. Uh, first Sunday we were there, we attended service in Lagos, with, uh, you know, one of the fellowships that we used to uh, always enjoy every time we went there. And when we were, the next weekend we were in Ibadan, we attended fellowship there as well, you know, and some of our brethren, um, you know, actually came from, you know, Abuja to visit with us in Ibadan when we knew that they were, when they knew we were there, and we went to their church. We had a good time there. And then the last Sunday on our way out, we went back, and they were having a youth, uh, you know, the Capson Youth uh, Ministry. They had a three days meeting, so I had opportunity in the last service uh, Sunday also to address the youth, and they were, they were from everywhere. They were not just from Lagos. <laughs> they came from all the states, you know, so it was a wonderful, you know, wonderful time. But when I, my first, on my first visit, the first Sunday that we were there, this is the first, this is, this thing I'm going to tell you is the first thing that I said to the people, you know, this was a message that God gave me, you know, for, I mean, I preached a lot of things, but I said, look, it's a message for the country, you know, and so I want to say to you guys, I know a lot of you are here, you're Nigerians and so forth, you know, and you heard nothing but bad news from that country. But I bring you good news. Amen. I bring you nothing today but news. <laughs> all that stuff that you hear all the time, you know, there's good news coming out of that country. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I got up on stage and I said to the people, I said, God will make Nigeria great again. That was my first message. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said to them, I said, well, there's a man in America that likes to say they're going to make America great again. I said, they're not going to do it. <laughs> I said, but God will make Nigeria great again. <laughs> I wasn't planning to preach that at all. But while I was on the plane, the Lord told me, you're going to say that when you get on stage. Hallelujah. And I psyched myself up to bring that prophecy. And then I said some other things along with that. But I want to tell you something. Those of you who are Nigerians here, I often wonder about, you know, what's going on with that. God is going to make Nigeria great again. Hallelujah. You know, and this is the way I said it. I said, when I say God will make, and I ask the congregation to say, Nigeria great again. So let's try that here. <laughs> Those of you who are Nigerians. When I say God will make, I want you to say Nigeria great again. God will make. God will make. God will make. Say it like you believe it. God will make. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I tell you, God's going to do it too. Amen. Praise God. Well, let me, let me tell you a story here from the Bible. There is a story in Zechariah chapter 1. You know, turn with me to Zechariah chapter 1. Let's read quickly from verses 7 through about 17. Zechariah chapter 1. You know, I want to tell you something. That the very God of Israel is also the God of Nigeria. Israel doesn't have an exclusive. <laughs> You know, praise God. Have, you know, I was not born in Israel. I'm not a Jew. I'm a Nigerian. You know, so I believe God for my country. Hallelujah. That's right. And when I see things in the Bible, promises and so forth and some things, you know, I love to just just oppose them for Nigeria. Amen. And if you believe God, you know, especially if you have you know, real faith, God will honor your word as though it was his word. Hallelujah. And I believe God's going to do that. Now, in this story, you know, I'm just going to paraphrase it. You know, Zechariah chapter 1, let's read through verses 7 through about 17. In this story, you know, as we go down through it, let me open it so I can breeze through it quickly. You know, what I want to bring out of this story is actually different than, 
you know, how the story itself starts out initially, you know, but there is, there's something good that we can learn out of this, okay? So, as part of this story, you know, let me, let me jump to verse, verse, uh, verse 9. Oh, my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said, I will show you what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees said, These be they which the, you know, whom the Lord had sent to walk to and fro through the earth. You know, so there were some, you know, messengers. They're like reporters. You know, they go throughout the earth to bring report to the Lord and so forth. You know, and then the angel that stood, you know, among the myrtle trees said, We have walked to and fro through the earth. And behold, the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Well, you know, when I read that, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if the earth really stood still and was at rest. You know, but, you know, you can see the good or you can see the evil. Hallelujah. That's the way I chose to be. You know, these people chose to bring a good report. You know, there was some angelic presence. And they chose to be, you know, in Isaiah it says, the whole earth is full of the glory of the Lord and so forth. You know, the whole earth, you know, I mean, they, they chose to see the good out of it all. You know, right now, you know, you, you have to really be in the realm of the spirit to see that the earth is full of the glory of God. Because there's so much wickedness, there's a mystery of iniquity that's walking in the earth right now. But yet these people say that the whole earth is full of the glory of God. You know, so in the midst of all of these things, these reporters, we call them alarters, we call them patrollers, you know, whatever you call them, they chose to bring a good report. Hallelujah. So I'm choosing to bring a good report concerning Nigeria. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is a story that I will just refer to quickly in Numbers chapters 13 and 14. In those two chapters, the Lord told Moses to pick a representative from each of the tribe and send them out to go spy out the land that God had promised them. But most of the people, except for Joshua and Caleb, brought an evil report. But Joshua and Caleb, they brought a good report. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I have been hearing nothing but evil report before I went to Nigeria. It's even my own sister, you know, told me not to come. She told me all kinds of negative things, being so paranoid and everything. And I'm like, the earth is the Lord's <laughs> and the fullness thereof. Amen. Hallelujah. If you believe it, well, you know, that's up to you. If you don't believe it, and so forth. Of course, we, you know, we spent a lot. I spent a whole week with my wife fasting, praying, and everything like that, just to make sure that we were ready, you know, but we were not afraid. The Bible said the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. Amen. <laughs> are you righteous? Are you bold? You don't need to be timid. So we went to this place, you know, and, you know, I looked around. I was sitting somewhere in a party yesterday. I was talking to a brother that was close to me, and he was asking me a question. I said, look, I don't know what the people were talking about, but I saw no evil. I heard no evil. Hallelujah. <laughs> See no evil, hear no evil. You know, everywhere I went, the Lord was doing good. And there was good everywhere. In fact, I looked around, you know, I saw people just living their lives. Of course, you know, even the United States, uh, you know, you know, the United States, uh, you know, embassy, consular services, they warned about different things and so forth. So, you know, we use caution and everything, you know, but they talk about travel in a city between cities and so forth. That's usually where the problem. When we, when we were in Lagos, Lagos is the busiest city in Nigeria, as you know. We were there. Ibadan, we were there. It's one of the also bigger cities there. Everybody seemed to be living their, I, I mean, I would go around, we went to the market, we saw everybody just doing their thing. We would look, we were going around, we were seeing little kids with their backpack on their back going to school. And even, you know, individuals, they were not in groups, you know, we'll just see one person. I mean, it was like, I mean, I'm like, because I used to think that nobody could even go out. Everybody was so scared, you know, that some evil thing or somebody would be kidnapped every minute of the day. 
these kids were just walking around doing things. Everything was just normal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You know, and of course, you know, we even saw livestock. We saw everything. We, I mean, everything just looked good. You know, I went to, we went to the market, some market and I mean, I could not imagine the number of crowds of people. I mean, everything was just good. I'm like, what are these people talking about? Well, we're not making light that those things didn't happen. You know, you try to tell that to the family whose person was kidnapped. You know, we know those things happen. But look, it won't happen to you. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So see no evil, hear no evil. You know, you don't worry about it. You know, just believe the Lord. You know, so we choose to believe and bring a good report. So I'm bringing you a good report from a far country today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And everywhere I went, you know, I saw everything look peaceful. I, you know, I really didn't see. Even the testimony that my wife gave that when the, you know, we, you know, this, this, this you know, we have a car in Nigeria, you know, uh, you know, CRV. And this thing is engineered in a way that's a single belt, a single belt that controls the power steering, controls the cooling system, controls everything. The one long belt that goes, just goes around it, you know, and that thing just snapped, you know, as we were driving along. Now, I, I tell you what, these were challenges that rose up, you know, and uh, as these things were happening, you know, I kept telling my wife, I said, look, we are more than conquerors, amen. <laughs> we'll conquer one thing. The next thing that comes up, we conquer it and move on to. Amen. We don't bother about it at all. You know, so, you know, now, about three months before we were going, you know, I started to reach out to the family that was, you know, uh, we left the vehicle with. You know, they had their own cars. You know, so they really weren't driving it. So they would just, you know, turn it on, you know, move it around the block. But that wasn't insuff sufficient. You can't just keep a car around like that for four years. So I said, look, I sent a whole bunch of money, take care of this, take care of that, take care of this, take care of that, take care of this, take care of that. They sent me back some reports of what they did, this and dude, and all this. So I thought the car was in good shape. But well, you know, who would have known? But the thing snapped. And when it's, the first thing we saw was, I just saw some water that splashed on my screen. I thought it was raining. I said, oh, where did that rain come from? And we went a little bit, and then all of a sudden I saw you know, this steam, and I, uh, ah, then I looked down at the dashboard, and I saw that the, <laughs> the needle for the, uh, in engine temperature had gone all the way to hot, and I just pulled over on the side, the, the you know, the, the, the bonnet, you know, or the hood or whatever was already smoking, you know, and I looked around, there was nobody, and they told us, they told us, you don't stop for anything, this is what they told us, they said, don't stop for anything. Don't stop on the way because this is the problem that usually happens from one city to other. Don't stop anywhere. Even the adversaries from the consular services, they told us all of that. People there told us all that. But we didn't mean to stop, but we stopped. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when we looked around, I said, well, I don't know. I looked around and said, where in the world are we? GPS wasn't working. You know, where am I? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I called somebody. You know, I called the, we just left a fellowship, right? So I called some of the people we just left. I said, they said, well, where are you? I said, I don't know. <laughs> well, what can you see? I can't see anything. <laughs> well, tell us, where did you just pass? I mean, I mean, what did you pass? You know, I said, well, we passed the toll gate. We passed this one. We are, we've gone so many miles. They said, well, where are you? I said, I don't know. <laughs> so then all of a sudden we saw some people coming, you know, and they're like, where are these people walking? I mean, I don't see any village anywhere. And these people are just walking. Where are you, where are you guys? I said, so I, I stopped and I said, hey, where are we? <laughs> they gave me some name. I said, oh, you know, they told me something. I said, okay, well, where's the next place? They said, oh, well, you know, you're almost at Ogiri or something like that. I said, oh, okay. You know, so now at least we have some information. Then, you know. And then I didn't, want to, I didn't want to appear that I, you know, looked vulnerable or anything. You know, I wanted to look like I knew what I was doing, right? <laughs> you know, I know where I am, you know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm just checking whether you know where you are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so all of a sudden, here comes, the, here comes this uh, tow truck. It looked nothing like a tow truck. <laughs> I mean, it was just some rigged up, some, some rigged up vehicle. And the thing pulled up in front of us. 
and stop. And the guy comes out and like, you know, you know, so, you know, I say, well, you know, I say, well, you know, so he said, well, that we're a tow truck. Can we, can we tow your car? I said, tow, tow me to where? <laughs> I said, don't worry about it. I got this. <laughs> you know, so in the meantime, anyway, we were not too far from this so-called Ogiri place. And one of the, one of the young folks from some of the families that we know very well for many, many years lives in that next city. It was, a, you know, a few kilometers I asked those guys, they said, well, you're about 10, 12 kilometers or something away from that place. I said, oh, that's not too far. So I tried to see if I could move the car myself. I did a little bit. That didn't work. So I ended up negotiating with this guy. I said, okay, store us to the next place. You know, first of all, they hit us with this, you know. I and mean, when you are vulnerable, when the people think you are vulnerable, so the guy first of all hit me with 30K, 30,000 Naira to tow my vehicle from here to there. And I said, no. And they said, go away. <laughs> and they said, oh, daddy. Now, all of a sudden, I'm daddy. You, uh, you know, just tell us now what you pay. I said, no, I don't have that kind of money. He said, well, what will you give us? I said, well, okay. I'll give you 5000 He said, well, hey, you should have said that now. Uh -uh. From 35000 to 5000 <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> And then I'm thinking, I should have said I'll give the buyer 1000 <laughs> I said, why did I even say 5000 I should have just given it. So anyway, I figured, well, it's worth 5000 But the guys started out with 25 You know, this is what they do in Nigeria. If you don't know, that's how they do it. But I grew up there, so I know, I know the game. Hallelujah. Praise God. So anyway, he told us there. The other guy, the, the young man that was coming to help us, he said, where are you? So you share your location. And I tried to share the thing. The GPS thing wasn't working. He said, I said, well, you know, he said, he said, I'm only 10, 15 minutes away. I'll be right there. You know, he stopped everything he was doing. He drove from the opposite side. He said, what kind of car are you in? I said, we're in such and such a car. He said, I'll be right there. In a few minutes, you know, he was there. He had to go turn around because they had this big, big giant wall in the middle of the, the freeway. You can't cross over. But he went behind, turned around, and then came right behind us. So, you know, the uh, towing vehicle saw them, and they stopped. And he said, and as soon as I saw him, it was somebody I knew. And I said, oh, yeah. And he said, don't worry about it. So they towed us to the next place, uh, you know, where there was the road safety commission or something. So when we got there, they took care of everything. We got new belts, new fan belt, new thing, and so forth. Got everything going. One other young man came to join us who was also going to Ibadan. This was the one my wife was talking about and heard that we were there. I said, well, I'll just join you. you know, so he joined us, you know, just to make sure that, you know, we felt comfortable. So we drove to Ibadan. Everything was good. Praise the Lord. It was just one small challenge. You know, we were not downtown at all. We just kept going. So, but anyway, that vehicle had all kinds of challenges. It was just so many things. But I tell you what, in every situation, the Lord was there. Hallelujah. One day, my wife and I went to the bank. And when we came out of the bank, tried to open, well, the remote had stopped working for whatever reason. Tried to open the, the, the car thing with the, the, the key. The key just snapped. <laughs> the key just broke. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> How are we going to drive this car? And we had another appointment to go to. So anyway, I took the key. I said, well, you know, this thing has happened to me once before when I was in Phoenix. I know what to do. Jerry, you know, this, these cars, they have this chip inside. How many of you know they have this chip inside the key? You know, so you got to, you know, the chip doesn't make contact. It's not going to start. So I knew that already. So I just say, okay, well, let me just figure this thing out. You know, so I just Jerry rigged the thing somehow. I started the car. I said, well, we're good. <laughs> Let's go on. So we went to my, we were going to visit my sister's place. My mind was that, Lord, let's just go there. I was thinking, well, let's just go home. Forget that. You know, well, no. I said, when we get there, we'll get some tape. We'll just tape it together and so forth. Well, so we get there. We get to my sister's place. Hey, uh, she says, drive into the compound. I said, oh, no, I'm just going to put the car. I said, drive into the compound. 
I said, okay. So I drove into the compound. Thank God I listened to that. Because when we were done, I wanted to go. The car didn't start. <laughs> that car slept in that compound that night. <laughs> we, took, we had to take, they call it bolts there. They call it Uber. It's what you guys call it here. They call it bolts. You know, so actually, one of the brethren actually came to take us. We were calling for bolts. They said, oh, no, 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 no. The, the brethren in the job fellowship said, oh, where are you? Go. we were supposed to go there, but we couldn't. I said, oh, we'll come and pick you. So they came and picked us. Well, guess what? We call the rewire. They call it rewire, right? These guys, they, they are geniuses. They know how to do anything. with. So the guy came along. I gave him the thing. He looked at it. He said, oh, the fuse is missing. I said, the fuse cannot be missing. I drove the car from here, from there. He said, look, he said, the fuse must have fallen inside the car. Otherwise, it would it, this thing acts like a demobilizer, right? If, if you don't make contact, it, the car will just stop. So we were looking inside the car for the fuse. I said, oh, maybe it's inside the house where I was trying to tape the thing together. We searched everywhere. My sister brought a broom. We swept everything. We turned the seat upside down. I didn't even know what we were looking for. He said, it's a little thing. So anyway... We couldn't find the thing. I said, forget it. They leave this car here. Just, we'll just go home. We'll come and deal with it tomorrow. So we went. We dealt with it. The following day, you know, somehow I remember I had actually a spare key. I brought this. I had a spare key with me here in the U.S. all the time. I took a spare key with me. So I said, well, the spare key is at home, our home, our own home. So when we got there, we took the spare key. We took bolts there and were able to use it, and everything was good. Well, everything was not good because... <laughs> All those attempts to start the car, the battery had died. <laughs> so, so now we have to look. It was one thing after the other. You know, I mean, well, you know, I just said, well, I told my sister, my wife, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, you know, God always had an answer. You know, so one day we went to one place. We said, we're going to buy something. You know, and this thing, you know, when you're in Nigeria, you have to, you know, make adjustments, right? You know, so we had a lot of things. We had AC and everything. No power. We have gen for that. No issues. You know, so we said, well, I'm going to buy these rechargeable fans. You know, you plug it in when there is NEPA or light or electricity or gen or whatever. And then the night when there is none, you use it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So anyway, we went and bought a couple of those things. I didn't have those before. I just had the regular standing fans. So we bought a couple of those things. Well, you know, so we finished buying those things. And as we were leaving, I said, oh, they were writing my receipt. And I had forgotten to pick it. So they stopped me. You haven't picked your receipt. So I had pulled the car out. And then I stopped. And I turned the key off. And I went to go and get my receipt. When I came back, the car wouldn't start. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you know, so we had another drama there. You know, finally, these guys, you know, they made it start anyhow. They just did something, called another rewire, called this, called this, called this. Eventually, we drove the thing home somehow. It was a fuse problem, you know. Somewhere along the line, these mechanics, you know, when a fuse is broken, instead of them replacing the fuse, they just take a piece of wire, jump the thing together. You know, in the process of jump, Jumping the piece of wire from one terminal of the fuse to the other terminal, that wire had, you know, uh, lost contact, you know, and it was one of the fuses for ignition or something. So anyway, cut a long story short, all those problems one after the other. So one day, you know, we're just driving around with the spare key, which was good. And so one day, uh, we're back in the house, and I said, well, you know, I'm going to just wipe down the car a little bit. I took a little thing, went inside the car, and just tried to wipe it down a little bit because there was dust everywhere. Hamatan was starting to kick in. And I tried to keep clean the center console. And as I tried to clean the center console, I picked it up. There was a little piece of trash, so I picked it, and I was looked at it. And there was this fuse. This fuse we have been looking for. It's a tiny, it's like a piece of, it looks like a piece of, rice grain and i'm like we have searched this place i mean even the rewire guy looked all over the place you know and the fuse was right there and then i took it i went and showed it to my wife i said look this is the thing we've been looking for and without this fuse 
We can't even put this uh, key together. So anyway, we found the fuse by a miracle. Praise God. And when we put it together, we were able to get the other key back. So now we have two keys. But at the end of the day, in spite of all of this, thing, there was really nothing major. It was just, even one of our friends were telling us that. I said, look, they live in Abuja, and they came to see us in Ibado. You know, they were, they've been here. Every time they come to the U.S., they stay here in our house. And they've been here. One brother, Bola, and one sister, Yinka. Some of you might remember them. So, and he was telling us that, look, even he himself that lives in Nigeria, when he leaves his car for just a few months, you know, all kinds of things, you know, creep into the car, you know. So, they encouraged us that it was no big deal. And it was never any big deal. It was just little things. There was nothing major, you know. But the good news that I'm bringing to you today is that things are not really as bad as all that stuff that you hear. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's not as bad. You need to believe that God is going to make that country great again. Amen. We need to believe that. And we need to be saying that. And don't be saying these negative things. You know, just like these angels, you know, there was trouble everywhere. But what they were reporting, they said, everything is good. I know everything wasn't good. <laughs> you know, but you can see good or you can see evil. Hallelujah. We chose to see no evil and to hear no evil when we went. And the Lord honored that. Praise the Lord. Now, I can't say that there wasn't evil happening. But, you know, it wasn't in our radar. Hallelujah. <laughs> and even driving along the streets and so forth. And I love to drive myself when I'm in Nigeria. My wife always says, look, when I go to Nigeria, I just put on another hat. I put on a Nigerian hat. You know, not a physical hat, but just mentality, you know. And when I'm there, I'm driving like they're driving. Hallelujah. <laughs> I got my hand on the horn, you know, I'm like, don't think, don't even think about it. You try to cut me up? No, don't. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, my wife, 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 I got my driver's license. I've got a current driver's license in Nigeria. Actually, it had expired, and I got a friend of mine to get another one ready for me before I got there. Because, well, go, I'm going to, I go drive myself. <laughs> I'm going to drive myself in Nigeria. You know, nobody's going to bamboozle me or bully me off the roads. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, we drove ourselves. We had a good time. It was an awesome time. So, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, it's a great place. Amen. The land is beautiful. The land is flourishing. You know, my, my sister had these papa trees behind her house. My goodness. I have never eaten papa like that. You know, maybe I have forgotten what it tasted like. You know, but some years ago, we went, many years ago, we went to Hawaii. And I said, oh my goodness you know i mean everywhere the vegetation people i mean even all these little kids they're they're plucking vegetables from their from their farm and they are hawking them on the streets right the land is so fertile hallelujah the land is good i don't know why people are complaining just plant something already <laughs> the land is good there is food everywhere all you have to do is do a little planting do a little something and so on and so forth you know God is good. Hallelujah. And the so-called security that people were so scared about, it didn't look quite as bad when we were there. You know, life seemed very normal. You know, we were there. We went everywhere. The Lord was with us. It was good. Of course, my wife and I would get up very early in the morning, praying to the day and all that. And it's a battle zone when you are there. You are, you are in the zone all the time. Hallelujah. You know, but a good soldier of Jesus Christ must endure hardness. Hallelujah. That's what Paul told Timothy. So endure a little hardness when you go to Nigeria. Endure all of the uh, bad roads and stuff. So, big, so what? Yeah, it's no big deal. They're just bad roads. <laughs> you know? And then you move on. Hallelujah. So I bring you good news today. It's not as bad as you think. It's not as bad as people make you think. You know? But the good news and the best part of it is God is going to do what? God is going to do what? And that's what we need to be saying. Instead of saying all these negative things about Nigeria. You need to be saying God bless Nigeria. You need to be saying these things. And praying these things. And God is going to honor it. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus. Amen. 
You know, in America, they are always saying, God bless America. You know, every time that they are in the, some sports game or something or whatever, it's always, you know, they play the national anthem. If they did these things all the time in Nigeria, people would be more patriotic. You know, you, you need to be saying, God bless Nigeria. And when I was there, I was saying, God is, go you know, I put my foot, you know, the Bible said, everywhere that you land, your foot stand upon and so forth. So I put my foot and I said, God is going to make this country great again. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, you know, I live in the United States. I've lived here for 38 years and so forth. But Nigeria is a land of my nativity. Hallelujah. And I was born there for a reason. You know, and you need to read the story of Nehemiah. You know, you can't forget the land where you were born. You know, you say, why am I in the peace here in the palace and the land of my nativity is in ruins? And he began to petition God first in his heart and then petition the king. So let's believe God together. Hallelujah. If you are not a Nigerian, you know, you know, bear, bear with us. You know, a lot of people here are Nigerians and I needed to get that off my chest because everybody here is thinking, well, that country is so bad and everything. No, it's not. You know, let's lift up our hands and let's pray for that country. Come on, lift up your hands if you're Nigerian. Pray for that country. It's not so bad. It's not so bad at all. You know, <laughs> that place is good. The place is good. It's actually flowing with milk and honey. You know, the vegetation is great. There's all kinds of good things there. You know, it's not bad at all. You know, you just need to know how to walk this system. Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We brought good news to you today. I did not bring an evil report against that nation. I brought you good news from a far country. And I hope and pray today that it has been like cold water poured over your head in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray, Lord, for that country. We stand in the gap. The Bible says, I look for a man to make up the hedge and to stand in the gap. And I stand in the gap today along with my brethren. Praise God. And we say God is going to make that nation great again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And there were many prophecies given in the 70s about that already. You know, so it's not just, you know, just saying it. You know, the word of the Lord backs it up as well. God is going to make that nation great again. Hallelujah. And then you will be able to go there freely. You won't have to worry about it, <laughs> you know. You can go and enjoy your time there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, as for this nation, America, which is where we live, hallelujah. Let's pray for this nation as well. You know, God had already made this nation great. They had their chance, you know. But this nation has turned. Listen to me. If you're hearing this, <laughs> this nation has turned its back against God. Or turn his back to God. I don't know how they say it. You know. But. And the handwriting is on the wall. But nevertheless. Because of all of us who are here. God is still letting. Amen. <laughs> he that let it will still let. And we pray for this nation. I want you to make prayer for America. For just a minute. And I want you to stand in the gap for your cities. You know, if you are from Casa Grande, if you are from Gilbert, you are from El Mirage, you are from Surprise, you are from Scottsdale, you are from Phoenix, you are, wherever you are from, I want you to stand in the gap for just a few minutes for that, for that place where you are from. And many of you are from Arizona. Stand for Arizona. And in general, we stand for America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray. Lift up your hands and let's pray for this nation. You know, this is bringing a great nation that has been a, you know, a place of refuge for many, many people from all over the world. If only this nation would keep the Lord on the forefront, it would continue to be great. But Lord, we pray and we ask that your mercy will be over this nation for the sake of all your children that live in this nation. And for the sake of every one of us, because this is where we live. The place, when this nation has peace, then we have peace. Therefore, we pray for our leaders in this nation. We pray that 
you will grant them the fear of God to do the right thing. And that the spirit, the spirit of patriotism will take over their hearts. Righteousness will reign. And they will do what is right for the common people in the name of Jesus. That's the same kind of prayer we need for Nigeria. You know, government is what is lacking there. And when I pick up my series, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to my series on the kingdom of God. I'm going to be talking more about how the kingdom of God is going to put an end to all of these things that are happening in the world. But God, in the days of those kings, will set up a kingdom that shall not be left to other people. Hallelujah. But that stone that was cut out from the mountain without hands is going to grow to fill up the whole earth and is going to break in pieces and stamp in residue and smash that image. <laughs> and the saints of the Most High, the people of the saints of the Most High, they are going to take the kingdom. They are going to... We are going to take the kingdom. Hallelujah. And we're going to possess it. And we're going to bring in everlasting righteousness. We're going to anoint the most holy. You know, we're going to do these things. And we're going to hear more about how these things will happen. You know, hallelujah. Raise your hands and just lift. Wave to the Lord. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that's my report from our trip. It was about seeing no evil and hearing no evil. And I brought you today not an evil report, but I brought you a good report. Therefore, let your heart be glad that God will make Nigeria great again. Give your Lord a hand clap, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, praise team. Take it away. Angels are singing. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Angels are crying every day. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Angels are crying. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord.
for the service this morning. We thank you for testimonies. Thank you for the goodness of the Lord. And we thank you for the offering that people have given into the work of the ministry. We pray your blessing into the lives of all your children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray, Lord, that you will be with every one of us for the rest of the day, for the week ahead. We ask that your plans towards us, your thoughts that you have for us which we know are for good and not for evil amen. that these things will materialize in our lives in Jesus name amen we give you Lord all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name we have prayed amen, amen. please be seated for some quick announcements um, Pastor Emmanuel you can come and do those Praise the Lord. Uh, two things quickly here, please. Everybody just pay attention for a little while. Um, Pastor Peter has asked for the parents to look for the yellow T-shirts that the children used last time, yellow one. Uh, please get it out and iron it um, for the preparation for their presentation on the 19th of uh, December. 
please get it out and clean it out for them and you can uh, be prepared. The other issue is that uh, Pastor John wanted us to know that on the 27th, which is coming Saturday at AM, 8 AM, the church will meet here for the outreach at the homeless shelter or uh, the location that they will be going. And he's saying that we needed some supplies from the church or donations, which has been announced several times. Uh, if you can and you want to donate, please donate. If you also can, you can also give cash donation to him so that they can buy the things they need. Uh, blankets and other things like the ones we brought last time are needed. Uh, but he can also take cash donation and buy those things. The activity will be this coming Saturday, November the 27th. And everybody who wants to participate, and we encourage everybody to participate, will be at 8 a.m. at GMI Church here. God bless you. Let's uh, share the grace. Uh, so, um, we also want to continue reminding every one of us, our sister Precious, the uh, Father's song, song of Service, uh, Service of Song, will be on the same December the 19th. The precious, what's the time again? At noon? Immediately after service at the church, please. Uh, let us try to be supportive, and she has been always been there for each and every one of us when there is need. So let us share the grace. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and a sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. And happy Thanksgiving in